The goal of this video is to briefly answer the question, what is a differential equation? So we'll try to, um, to say what it really is, a differential equation. What does a solution to a differential equation look like? And where do these differential equations come from? And we'll do this in the context of a couple of examples. So the short answer to the question, what is a differential equation? It's simply an equation with derivatives. And that may seem like a glib answer, but it pretty much hits the mark. Here are four examples of differential equations. The first three are examples of what we would call ordinary differential equations. And these are equations where there's one input variable and one output variable. In the first equation, for example, y is the output variable, x is the input variable. The fourth equation is something you might run into. Um, the funny little derivative symbol d, the funny d-shaped thing, curly d, indicates a partial derivative. And what's going on there is the function u is a function both of x and t. And if you have the choice of being able to take the derivative with respect to more than one variable, you would you take a so-called partial derivative. We're not going to look at these things, but it's important for you to know what they are. They are just other types of differential equations. This happens to come, this is called the heat equation. It happens to come from a problem where you have temperature u along a rod where x is the position and t is the time. But we're not going to look at those. We're going to concentrate on the ordinary equations. And among these, we can have a little bit of a classification according to what order derivative uh, we're looking at. So the first two examples are first order equations because we're just taking the first derivative. The next example is actually a second order equation because the second derivative shows up. You might be able to imagine what a third or fourth or fifth order equation looks like. Now, what is the solution to a differential equation? Let's remember what a solution to an ordinary equation is, just a, you know, not a differential equation, but just an equation like x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Hopefully you don't launch into the quadratic formula for this guy. You can factor it and find two solutions. We could assemble these into a so-called solution set, or we could plot the solutions on the number line. So there's three points, negative 3 and 2 are the, the two solutions to this equation. You could have an equation in two variables. A solution looks a little different in this case because now it's not just a single number but a pair of numbers. So 5, 0, and these other examples, they're, they're all solutions to the equation. Actually, they're, they're only four of many, in fact, infinitely many. There are infinitely many pairs of numbers that will work. And what's the best way to describe the solution set in this case? It might be graphically. We could plot all the pairs, ordered pairs, in the plane that satisfy this equation. And you would recognize the equation of a circle of radius 5 around the origin. So each point on this circle represents a different solution to the equation. So that's, that's what we're talking about when we talk about solving equations that we've known and loved for years. But now the issue is, what is a solution of a differential equation? So here's a simple differential equation. Well, you notice that since we're referring to dy dx, sort of implicit in the statement is the fact that y is the dependent, or the output variable, and x is the independent, or input variable. And to solve the differential equation means we're looking for a function that just makes the equation work. Just like we were trying to find numbers or ordered pairs of numbers that made the equations work on the previous slide, we're looking for, in this case, a function that makes the equation work. So y equals 1 3rd x cubed is a function that makes this equation work because if we take the derivative, we get dy dx equals x squared. So we would say that y equals 1 3rd x cubed is a solution of dy dx equals x squared. So where do differential equations come from? Um, often you can make an observation in nature, and if that observation has anything to do with rates of change, then differential equations become good candidates to enter the picture. In this case, you might make the observation that the rate at which a population increases is proportional to the population. So if you let p of t be the population function of t, time t, then your observation translates into dp dt is equal to k times p. And from your observation, you've, you've translated that observation into a differential equation. And so 
however the population behaves, it should obey this differential equation. Here's a, another example from physics. If you have a mass on an ideal spring at equilibrium position and you displace that from equilibrium by a distance x, there's a restoring force trying to work against that and Hooke's law is just an empirical observation that that force is proportional to the displacement. Newton's law tells you that another way to write the force is mass times acceleration, but acceleration is just the second derivative of position with respect to time. So you have these two ways of writing out the force, and if you equate them, you obtain a second order differential equation. Once again, however the spring behaves once you release it, you expect it to obey this differential equation. So let's look at the nature of solutions for both of these. Now, please be aware that I'm, I'm not going to describe how to solve the equations. We're just going to look at how to verify that we actually have solutions in hand. So let's look at the function p of t equals c e to the k t. k is the constant that shows up in the original differential equation. c is a new constant we're throwing into the picture. And our claim is that this function is a solution to the differential equation for every value of c. Now how can we check that? In this case it's very simple. We'll just take the derivative and the chain rule forces a factor of k to pop out and we recognize this quantity as p and so we find that dp dt does in fact equal kp. What we have verified is that this is a general solution to the differential equation and it's a solution no matter what the value of c is. c is irrelevant so there's actually an infinite number of solutions one for each value of c. In the case of the uh, spring equation, we claim that this rather formidable looking function is in fact a solution, and in this case, a and phi are quantities that we can take to be whatever we want, and it's still going to be a solution. So the verification is similar. We're just going to take two derivatives this time, and we'll notice that the underlying quantity here is precisely what we called x to begin with. So in fact, the second derivative of x with respect to t is negative k over m x. And if we multiply both sides by m, we recover the original equation. One of the things to notice is this is a second order equation, and we have two parameters, a and phi, that we can pick to be whatever we want. And this is generally the case. The higher the order of a differential equation, the more free parameters there will be in your general solution. So that's our brief introduction to differential equations.